Hello, everyone. Welcome to Algebra 1, Lesson 6-5. This is the last lesson of the topic, Transformations of Exponential Functions. Um, in this lesson, we'll be able to perform, analyze, and use transformations of exponential functions. Uh, let's look at model and discuss. A radio station uses the function f of x equals 100 times base 3 to the power of x to model the growth of band A's fan base. So part A, what would the graph of the function look like for band B with a fan base growing twice as fast as band A's fan base? This is band A's fan base. Um, it's growing exponentially, so it's increasing uh, really rapidly. But what would band B with a fan base growing twice as fast look like? So if it's growing much faster, double faster, if, uh, if, if a month is passed how how much um no, how many number of fans would there be compared to band a band a seems like um after a month it has about 300 so one comma 300 so band b if it doubles after a month it should have double the amount of fans right so 300 times 2 is 600 so that could be 1 comma 600 for band B. And same thing, 2, uh, two comma 900, not 300. So 2 comma 900 for band A. Band B would be double that. So 2 comma, instead of 900, you would have 2 comma 1,800. So that's 1.3k, 1.4k, 5k, 6k, 7k, and 8k, 1.8k. So about here. And so it's going to grow super fast. OK. Um, yeah. So basically, what will happen? The graph would increase more rapidly. Okay, compare and contrast the two graphs. Both graphs have a y intercept of 100. They start from 100 okay but an asym uh, and also an asymptote of y equals zero right uh it's not gonna be uh, there's not gonna be zero fans they're gonna have um more than one fan it's a growing band okay and a range of y is greater than zero so all the number of fans would be positive not negative and but what's different? Band B graph is steeper than band A's graph, right? So we can say this is part B, okay? Both graphs have a y-intercept of 100 and an asymptote of y equals 0 and a range of y is greater than 0. If you're comparing them, you're definitely going to look at the uh, y-intercept, asymptote, and the range, and possibly domain as well. The band B, but in this case, domain is going to be the same, um, and it's not as important as, uh, as, the, as the range. So it's fine but you can add domain is also the same it's going to be positive numbers of months um, and you can add band b the band b graph 
is steeper than the band A graph. Part C, look for relationships. Suppose B and C starts with a fan base of 200 fans that is growing twice as fast as band A's fan base. Compare and contrast this new function with the previous two functions. So now we have a band C. Band C starts with 200 instead of 100, but then it grows twice as fast fast as band A's. So band A grows three times as much every month, right? But that means every month, instead of three times, twice of that is six. Wait, wait, wait. Um, Wait, no, we gotta, we gotta multiply the three first and then we're gonna times it by two, okay? So after a month, instead of 200, you're gonna, you're gonna triple that first. So function of C is going to be, you're gonna start with 200. Initial value is 200. But instead of three, you're growing twice as much. So you're gonna multiply three times two, six every month. So that's gonna be 200 times six for the first month, which is already 1,200. Then the next month, it's going to be um, from 1,200, it's gonna be a lot greater than that. Right? So that's band C. Band B should, should have been 100 and six to the X power as well. So I think band B, let me check the points again. Um, one, so yeah, so that's 600. But then the second point, is gonna be three, it, it's actually gonna be two comma um, 3,600, sorry. I think I counted from the initial value and just doubled it, right? Um, but you're supposed to have a new equation for that. So it's gonna be a lot greater, a lot faster, okay? So the more, your base is the faster it grows, right? The greater your number is, the faster it grows. So so band C, whoops. Band C graph, vertical stretch of the band B graph. All three graphs increase as x increases. Um, the function for band C would be f of x equals 200 times 6 to the power of x. I'm gonna just draw X on top. Here. Okay. All right, so in this lesson, think about how, uh, we're gonna think about how ch uh, changes in an exponential function would relate to translations of its graph. Let's look at example one. Vertical translations of graphs of exponential functions. How does the value of k affect the graph of f of x equals two to the power of x plus k, where you're, you're adding a constant to the function itself, not on the exponential part, 
but to the function, the whole function itself. So try plugging in some values for x. Okay, how does it affect? So your parent function f of x equals two to the x power. Your parent function is the base, the same base um, with no transformation. Okay, so that's the parent function. And then this is the transformation of plus three, and that's the transformation of minus three for K. Okay, so we're gonna add some stuff. Um, if you look at if you look at this graph, the black one is two to the X. That's the parent function. If you add three, it looks like you're moving up three units above. And if you subtract three to your function, it looks like you are moving three units below the, uh, the, the graph. So if you look at X, you're gonna plug in some numbers, negative two, negative one, these are just random numbers. These are not you know, solutions for this problem or anything. There's no solution for this problem. It's uh, these, all of these points are going to be solution to its own problem in the on the line. Okay, all the points on the line by definition are solutions on the line. So the point here, negative two comma one over four, is a solution for the parent function. Okay. And, but then negative two comma three and one fourth is a solution, is not a solution for the parent function for the black one, but it is a solution for the blue graph. And negative two comma negative two three fourth is not a solution for blue or black, but it's a solution for the red function. Okay, going back to the definition of the function. And so you're gonna plug in some points to see what kind of y values do you have. And after you plot it, that's how you graph your exponential function, right? And then you, you put a curve on it and then draw the arrows, okay? Um, and you compare the graphs. It looks like you give a translation three units up and three units down when you add the constant. So if, if K is positive, you add, you, you have a translation to the uh, going up. And if you have a K that is negative, it looks like your graph is moving down. Okay. So keeping that in mind, look at try question number one, A and B. How does the graph of g of x equals two to the power of x plus one compare to the graph of f of x equals two to the x power? Part B, j of x is equal to two to x minus one. How is it compared to the parent function f of x equals two to the x power? See if you can describe it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. You can use Desmos to compare the graphs as well. Okay, are you ready? So graph of parent function f of x is equal to two to the power of x, okay? Um, you should be able to graph them by yourself, but I'm assuming you already know how to do that by plugging in points, okay? Plug in values for x and then figure out your y value. And that's gonna be your points for the graph. So draw the graph of f of x and g of x if you don't know how to graph it. Practice. Okay, um, g of x is going to be when k is 1. So g of x is equal to 2 to the power of x plus 1. So you should have a graph that looks something like that. It looks like all the points moved one unit up. This is one actually. It's because the grid line is, is well, but that's one, okay? Zero comma one. And that's gonna be zero comma two. Okay, so it moved one unit up. That is um one comma two. 
and that is one comma three. So I moved, wait, one comma two, one comma three. Yeah, it moved one unit. So if you compare all the points, all the y values are gonna be one greater compared to the parent function. Okay, so what is that called? It's a translation, one unit up from f of x. Okay, what about part b? When you have k is negative one, so j of x equal to two to the power of x minus one. So look at all the points. It's zero comma zero when your parent function has zero comma one. When your parent function has one comma two, your your function will have um, one comma one. So all the y values are gonna be one less than your y values of the parent function. So you can say that j of x is a translation one unit down from f of x. Okay, good. Um, let's look at the next example. Horizontal translations of graphs of exponential functions. Compare the graph of g of x is equal to 2 to the power of x minus h with a graph of f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x when h is greater than 0. What effect does h have on the graph of g? So now we don't have k, but h is a constant that is added or subtracted, and that is subtracted to your exponent. So see what the patterns are when h is um, subtracted, okay? So what if we don't add numbers on the entire uh, function, but just on your exponent? What happens? Okay, I'm gonna erase that. Well, make it disappear for now. And then I'm gonna write another function that's basically the same for our a parent function, but I, we're gonna we're gonna add one to your to our no not here x plus x plus one. Okay, what happens? This is the parent function, the red one. Okay, you have one comma zero comma one for your minus set. But then your y intercept is 0, 0,2 here. But then it's not always going to be 1. Your y is not always going to be 1 above. So it's not a translation of 1 unit up. What happens? So think about it horizontally. Your, your point here on the parent function moves 1 unit to the left. So negative 1, 1. So your x value moves one unit to the left. And that makes sense because one comma two, if you move one unit to the left, it's zero comma two. And this one over here, you see that? It's always gonna be one unit away horizontally, not vertically, okay? So when we have h on your exponent, it's gonna be by default, you're looking at it as a subtraction, okay? So if you have x, the power of uh, x minus two, then from the parent function, you're moving two units to the right. So if you're subtracting your age, that's when you move to uh, that many units to the right. If you're adding age, okay, that means you're going left. Why is it different? Because we talked about it during the transformation topic. When you're just changing the horizontal movement for X, you're not changing the whole graph. So you're writing, you're changing in terms of X, not Y, but your function is written in terms of Y, your function, right? If you put, put, uh, if you put the input X, in there, you get an output of f of x, your function, uh, the range. 
But if you write, rewrite the equation in terms of domain, that's when you're going to get a different sign. So that's when you're going to get plus is going to be right. And then left is going to be negative. But this is your function is already written in terms of your range. So since you're just changing the input, it's going to be opposite. I know it's kind of hard to understand for, but, uh, right now, but just remember that in transformation, when you're changing the whole thing, the entire function, then you are changing the range and it's intuitive. Plus is above, negative is going down. But if you're changing just the part of the equation, which is the horizontal movement, it's going to be the opposite. When you're subtracting a number, then it's going to go right. It's going to look like the graph is going right. And um, the opposite is going to be going left. OK. So yeah, let's look at try number two. Compare the graph of each function with the graph of f of x is equal to 2x. What effect does h have on the graph of each? We just looked at it, right? So 2 to the power of x plus 2. So instead of negative 2, let's add 2. And that means from the parent graph, we're going to go 1, 2 units to the left, 1, 2 units to the left, right? So that is translation two units left of f of x, the parent function, okay? This is for part A. And then part B, when you have minus two, so when your h is positive two, then your graph is moving two units to the right from, from your parent function to the, um, the transformation function, you're moving two units to the right. So you can say that J of X is a translation two units right of F of X, okay? So remember the transformations. When H, is positive, you go right. When h is negative, you go left. But your h is going to be subtracted from your form. Okay, remember that. When k is positive, you go up. k is down, you go down. But your k is added to your form in your equation. Okay, so just remember that. Look at example three. Compare two different transformations of f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. How can you compare the properties of G given in the table to the properties of J um, given in the graph? So that's the property of G. F of X is here. G is not in the graph. J is in the graph. J is not on the table. So G of X and J of X are different, okay? So, but these are different information but they're comparing it to the same parent function to the power of x. So g of x is going to be on uh, um, these points. So when x is 0, you have 3. When x is 1, you have 4. When x is 2, you have 6. Okay, These are the points for g of x. And then um, negative one, two, and two. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, but f of x is the blue line. Okay, when when it's when x is zero, you have one. When x is uh, one, you have two, and so on. J of x, when x is zero, you have zero comma zero. So you can make a table for j of x as well. So when x 
is zero, j of x is zero. When x is one, j of x is one. When x is two, j of x is three. Does that tell you anything? When x is negative one, it seems like it's about negative 0 0.5. Okay, so how are they related? It's a translation. Uh, is it a translation going up or down or left or right? We'll look for the relationship. Are they consistent vertically? Well, they're one unit apart here, but not always are they. Well, yeah, vertically it is, but horizontally they're going to be different. Okay, so do a uh, draw some lines to see is it horizontal or is it vertical? Are the are the distances more consistent vertically or horizontally? For j of x, it's a vertical translation, so it's moving one unit down. Okay from f of x to j, j of x. From f of x to um, g of x, what's happening? Vertically, it's different, right? Horizontally, though, what do you have horizontally? It's also different. So what do you do? So the you first, compare the y-intercept. The y-intercept of graph of f is 1. Y intercept of G is three. So it's two greater. Is it always two greater? Well, it seems like it. Two greater, two greater, two greater. From this point as well, this point, two greater, two greater, right? So it's gonna be a translation actually, vertical translation, two units above, okay? So we can compare uh, the y-intercepts first and see if it works vertically all the way. If it doesn't, um, you have to look at it horizontally as well. So you can also talk about the range and the asymptote. Since the asymptote for G is gonna be y equals two, because it doesn't seem like it's gonna go be below that. The range of G is Y is greater than two. And um, the parent function is gonna have the asymptote where, where the range where Y is greater than zero and the asymptote of X axis. So those are the different um, parts. We're gonna compare J to F. The Y intercept is zero for J. And as x decreases, j of x gets closer to negative one. So your asymptote is gonna be y is equal to negative one. And that means your range is y, all y is greater than negative one instead of all y's uh, that are positive greater than zero, okay? So asymptote and then your range. And you can compare G to J now that you have both. So the graph of G is a graph of F translated two units up and J is the graph of F translated one unit down. So graph of G is the graph of J translated three units up, right? Together. Because they're both translated vertically, you can just add them up. So the asymptote of G is three units greater than the asymptote of J. And so the values of G are three units greater than the Y values of J. So the range is also gonna be three units apart. Okay, let's look at try number three, parts A and B. The graph of the function B is a vertical translation of the graphs of A of X is equal to three to the X power. It has a Y intercept of zero. How does the graph of C of X equals three to the power of X plus one compare to the graph of B? And part B, how does the graph of M of X, they're just function notations, okay, equals three to the power of X minus three compared to the graph of P of X equals three to the X uh, plus four. C 
see if you can compare them. Try to compare the asymptote, the range, and the translations. See if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So, if uh, function B is vertical translation of the graph of this, you don't know if it's going up or down, um, but you know that it has a y-intercept of zero. So you can compare the y-intercepts. So let's um, graph the parent function. So that means a of x is the parent function, right? So a of x is equal to 3 to the power of x is your parent function. It has a y-intercept of 0, 1. But your function b is going to have a y-intercept of 0. And it's a vertical translation of your parent function. So you know there's going to be a k that makes it true. OK? So that this k, you can move it up and down. From your parent function k, when k is zero, it's basically your parent function. You're adding zero. So it's nothing, no change. But your y intercept, it must be zero. So when k is negative one, if you move the graph down one unit, then that's when your y intercept is zero. Okay. So that means what is the graph of function b? Function B then is going to have 3 to the power of x minus 1, right? Because k is negative 1. So you just subtract 1 to your equation. That's k. Um, yeah. And how does the graph of c of x, x to the power of x plus 1? So now we got another graph, c of x, which has the same base and the parent function, but we're adding one instead of minus one. Okay, so that's c of x and that's b of x, and that's the parent function. Parent function, b of x and c of x. How are they, uh, how are they similar? How are they different? Compared to the graph of b, what is c of x? What, what kind of translation would c of x have? Compared to B, you're moving how many units up? One, two units up because C of X is one unit above the parent function A. And it's going to be two units above uh, the function B because B is one unit below the parent function A, right? So together you can add them up and say C of X is a translation up two units of b of x. Okay, how does the graph of m of x equals three to the power of x minus three compared to the graph of p of x, three uh, x to the power of x plus, uh, plus four, okay? So without graphing, can you figure it out? That's a translation from the parent function, if the parent function, well, parent function is going to be 3x, right? Your translation here is when k is equal to negative 3. That means you could go uh, translate down three units. Here, k is 4. That means you translate uh, up four units, okay? Translate the graph four units above and three units below. So together, how could you compare m to p? How many units apart are they? Seven, yeah. So m of x is a translation down seven units of p of x. You need to know which one is the graph that's below, which one is the graph that's above. Obviously, this one moves down, so m of x is going to be below, and p of x is going to be above. All right. Okay, so let's summarize our lesson. 
we looked at some translations of exponential functions. So vertical translation is gonna have the constant k. When your k is an, uh, positive, then you go up. And when k is negative, you go down. But your k is added, okay? Your h here, when h is positive, you go right. When h is negative, you go left but h is subtracted. So that means when you have 0 0.5 to the power of x plus three, that means your h is negative three. So that means you go left. And here your h is positive three. So that means you go right. This one is right and that one is left. Three units, okay? This one is just obviously um, three units up three units down, okay? Because k is added, k is gonna be three, positive three, k is gonna be negative three over here, okay? So keep that in mind um, for transformations of exponential functions. That was the last lesson of topic six, guys. Um, we're done with um, exponents and exponential functions topic. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask Miss King in class. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next topic. Topic seven is about polynomials and factoring. All right, thanks for watching. Bye guys.